Bye bye is helping him. What a nice bear. Ooh. I don't think you can get more than three. Well, I mean, he has 11, so maybe you can't. <laughs> Math is hard. Well, Shadowfiend, either way, is going to start things off with a very balanced amount. Okay, they're just going to keep on doing it, man. They have all day. 14 now. Now, I'm not really sure. I thought the whole point of Necromastery was that it steals souls. And these things are not... They're, they're not alive. They're not alive. It's a, it's a literal power battery thing, so... Not really sure how those have souls, but Shadow Fiend finds a way. Not gonna cost them anything, really, at all. There's pure benefit from the C deck squad. Let's quickly go over who's playing what before they clash. Sep is gonna be on the clockwork top lane again. Expect to have a good time from him. Shade is on the SF. A really good start for him already. June is playing the Kunkka. Sick hat. Demons is on the C, and we got Flyby on the Ursa. Going up against this lane is Faith Bien on the Legion Commander. No IO here. It's Ice Ice IO. Over mid right now, helping out Shadow for a little while. Up towards the top lane, it is Blink on the Ember Spear, and that leaves Y on the Lion. Now, over towards the mid lane, we do have June already with the uh, Torrent leveled up, already did miss once. The damage extra on the Shadow Fiend is all well and good, right? Like, that's going to help him CS. It's souls help you get more souls. That's just how it works to Shadow Fiend. Souls do not help you man fight up against a Viper. I don't think there's many situations where a Shadow Fiend can... Right click trade with the Viper successfully, uh, let alone a Viper and an Io. This is going to make this bottom lane perhaps a little bit weaker, but Legion Commander going just up against Ursa should be able to at the very least stick around and get some, ex some experience. I just looked at this last hit denied chart, it's 2 at 15. It's, it's so ridiculously broken. Uh, but yeah, yeah, Faith Band should be just fine to get some experience with the worst. Some gold is probably going to come in towards the uh, Legion as well. I just want to give Shadow. A nice little start here. Shadow Fee just isn't durable enough to trade hits with Io and the Viper. Just so much. What the what? Oh my god. And 1k MMR caster right here. I did not expect Legion Commander to get jumped like that. I honestly didn't. Crystal Maiden usually just going to be AFK in the jungle. And Earth so yeah, I was trading hits with her, but... Killed the chaser down. My sincerest apologies, guys. Seems like the action was mostly going to be in towards this mid lane. Viper and I are really putting the screws to the SF. Leading in the uh, CS by quite a lot. Only 3 CS for the Shadow Fiend is a super rough time. Trade off perhaps is that the bottom lane and top lane are weaker. First blood for C deck, kind of proving that. Clockwork, gotta be careful about this, uh, this Ember Spirit. Burn out some of his mana, but uh, it's not really going to be super useful until the uh, Ember Spirit is actually willing to go for kills. Level 3, level 4 in the Ember Spirit around that time, then you want to start seriously burning out the mana. Clockwork is going to get a lot of experience. Clockwork with a lot of experience is a threat to, uh, well, obviously anyone, but mostly this mid lane. Get that level 6 up. Join with a Shadow Fiend. Put, once you put Cog down, it's very easy to land a double raise. It's uh, very possible to land a triple raise. Speaking of Shadow taking a face full of the shadows. Io left him. I mean, I think that Ice Ice, you're gonna teleport up towards top lane. It's in an attempt to go kill off uh, Clockwork, which is, which is you know, worth your time for sure. If you can make it happen. But uh, Viper up against SF, who has all these souls, who has the extra mana. Kind of needs the sustained help. Is, is not really able to get off to a good start and then you just leave him alone. If you get him to level 6... Then you can probably leave him alone, but obviously he's not there yet. It's only three minutes in the game. Cogs go down up towards top lane. No bounce back from Blink, and now the clock is in a lot of trouble. He doesn't even have battery assault to slow him down. He's stuck in between the tethers, and he will be chopped down by a Y. Over to the mid lane in the meantime, they converge into the Viper. They take him down as well. 2-1 in favor of CDEC. Again, killing off the clockwork is all well and good for wins, but uh, leaving your Viper here to dry... Letting the Shadow Fiend now overtake him in CS, and I think in denies by a little bit. Who knows what these denies actually mean? I certainly do not know. Three sheets to the wind. Kind of a costly move there from Wings. Clockwork is getting a hell of a lot already, and it's not really like you can completely shut down a Clockwork with the set of heroes that they have right now. If it is going to be possible at all, it would have been possible if you just level 1'd him. 3v1 him, level 1. 
But at this point, the ship has kind of sailed. Cogs are up, his flare is up, so killing him repeatedly, possible, but kind of unlikely. This Io is just on the roam. June's been camping out this mid lane a lot. X Torrent into a couple of raises, and Viper only with. with oh, is in a lot of trouble now. No, the Torrent is just cast without the X. Now Shadow's gonna get a lot of juice back. I'm not really sure what happened there. June could have double casted, and now he's just gonna die as well. The end comes in hot. Okay, if you X Torrent the Viper. Maybe he didn't have enough mana? No, he definitely had enough mana. If you X Torrent the Viper, you land that combo, obviously. You land the raises. That's guaranteed to land. I want to say you get the kill, but uh, deciding just to free hand torrent it, a little bit greedy there from the Kunkka, ends up costing him. Costs the Shadow Fiend as well. I obviously didn't expect the Legion Commander to come in, although they probably should have. Ursa's been uh, 1v1ing the Legion Commander this entire time, so it's kind of obvious once the Legion Commander is off the map. Still, the Ursa is pretty darn happy. Most guests in the game, uh, not the most nice in the game. What a scrap. Yeah, opens the door for a pretty early rush. Obviously, it's Ursa, so it's probably gonna happen regardless of how the Ursa is actually doing. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Really need this Viper to get to level six, though. The lane gets so much different once this Viper hits uh, level six. Viper Strike, just that nuke damage onto the Shadow Fiend, rivals that of the Shadow Fiend's raises over time, of course. Not that powerful, but the Shadow eating two raises. There's a lot of backup here. Here comes the missed torrent again, but you can't miss Frostbite, nor can you miss the X mark, so they get the kill on the Viper. A little bit off there, June. A little bit off. Spike onto the Crystal Maiden. That'll show her. And in the meantime, Flyby is an angry bear, and Faith Bien will survive. There's uh, no press here on the Legion Commander. Actually heals, but I think you probably want more of courage anyway. The Earth is having a time of his life, and oh, June found ice, ice. Get chopped, still damn June on the Kunkka. Can he get out of here? There is no duel. The Legion has nothing here. Lion is too far away. June's gonna slip out of there. The easy support on support kill. Support on support violence. It makes me sick. Uh, in the meantime, top lane, Clockwork, not winning the lane, not by any stretch. Ember Spirit's still very happy in his CS department. But Clockwork is doing pretty darn well for himself. Blade Mail is going to be coming up at, at a really good pace, honestly, for Clockworks. Usually we see Clockworks get shut down a little bit harder. He's gone for a high level of Rocket Flare. Great for getting gold in the short term. In the slightly longer term, though, this means that his hook shot's gonna be a lot weaker, and he might need it right now. Shadow Fiend is gonna be jumped on. Hex and the right clicks. Here comes the clock. Cogs go up. Saving Shade. Turn around for the raises. Gets one. But no, it's gonna be wise. Slip out of there. Step is gonna still get the battery salt out. Slow down Shadow by just hair. Letting another raise land. And a torrent to land it. Finally lands from June. Everyone and their mom. And okay, well, there goes the Shadow Fiend. Showing up towards the mid lane. As C deck get a clean two for one. Clockwork. Jumping in there as we saw with the hook shot, but as far as the damage afterwards, a level one battery assault, still as far as spells go, does quite a bit of damage, but you could certainly do a lot better than just that. This will come in handy. Still, as the build that Clockwork has decided to go for, his individual kill power is not gonna be strong enough uh, to get solo kills until he gets that battery assault, you know, at least level three. Maybe level 2 to kill off like an Io or a Lion if they're by themselves. Hey, hook shot, hook shot. Saw them uh, try to get in there to protect Shades. And that was a really good timing, honestly, for the Clockwork. Came in, or started his TP pretty much as soon as the Lion uh, made his move. Can't ask for a better response for an SF and he just stuck it too long. Shit happens, though. Ooh, flyby up towards the top lane. Ursa's definitely capable of bullying back the Ember Spirit. Probably can't kill him, because, you know, Ember Spirit. A little bit of help, though, and it's definitely a possibility. Three heroes converge on top. Io with no mana has a full bottle, though. So, yeah, you can stick around there for a while. Do you like the move, though? Demons is not really a hero, Crystal Maiden, that needs the uh, extra time in the lane. 
kind of nice for her to get the extra levels. Like, getting those nukes up is quite nice. But uh, this, by putting Ursa on top lane, you don't give him necessarily a, a better or worse lane. But you give Crystal Maiden a lane, and you get by closer to the uh, Roche Pit. Snaked Wings uh, a little bit... It forces them to be on their toes a little bit more. Because they know that, hey, Ursa, he was just top. Where could he be right now? Well, probably at the Roche Pit. But uh, it's a lot more obvious than uh, if he leaves bottom lane to go to the Roche Pit. Because the distance is so far further. Incoming! Mating grabs Freezing Field. Freezing Field is actually really nice when you have a clockwork on your side. Because, uh, you know, it prevents the enemies from moving in to cancel. Ember Spirit can still do it pretty easily. Lion has a pretty long range stun in that spike. Oh, Smokes. Scanned out by the Radiant, but Shade is still here! They saw him! Demon's gonna let loose with his ultimate do quite a bit of damage to everyone. And oh my god, it's actually adding up a lot now. Here comes September, as well as Flyby. They catch two in the Cogs. Fabian and Y both in a lot of trouble, both will fall. Ember Spirit does have a remnant out of here. He'll be just fine. Io will jump out of there as well. Looks like he will be A-OK -okay also. That scan went off and they saw red, but oh, they're gonna find Shadow. Here comes the boat. No boat, never mind. Who needs a boat? What's a boat? I don't even know what that is. Flyby is going to claw the Viper down and get a clean triple. They saw the Blink Dagger on the Ursa on top lane, or they should have. He showed it off to the creeps. Perhaps no one was checking, but they definitely did not expect that much in the way of reinforcements. You should have. They're going this deep for a kill. Well, there's a tower here. There's a shrine here. There's a tower here as well. There's towers freaking everywhere. You're, you know you're surrounded. They had to get in. They had to get out. And yeah, they killed off the SF, which is amazing. For the wing side, but they lost way too much. They lost a lot, and they lost it to the Ursa. Also, demons, crystal maiden value right there. It costs a lot of man. When you're prioritizing your aura, mana issues are uh, not really going to be coming up all too often. Bottom tower is under now she's going to have. The fastest Hand of Midas a Crystal Maiden has ever picked up in the history of Dota. And a Crystal Maiden with farm, let me be the first to tell you, is an absolute monster. Now, first of all, you get uh, more gold than experience nowadays. A Crystal Maiden with experience is obviously insane. Like, her nuking power is so high, especially if you're able to level up quickly. The only problem with mid Crystal Maiden is that she sucks mid. Otherwise, her nukes would be absolutely legit if you could pull that off. But the gold you're able to get for positioning, absolutely incredible. You're going up against a Viper, you're going against a Lion, so you know those magic sources for their ultimate will be brick walled by a fast glimmer cape. Alternatively, get a blink dagger, get a BKB, go old school aggro crystal maiden, and oh prep for a viper kill. Here comes the bear! And Viper is gonna need a way out of here. He's gonna get yanked out. Boat is coming in. Buy some rum, but that's about it. Ice Ice. Forced to use the relocate defensively. Not ideal, but it's definitely better than losing your Viper there. Oh, Flyby finds a double damage unit. That's not really huge, because it's the Fury Swipes that does the damage. But he is ready to go. He just needs a little bit of cover. He doesn't die while this is happening. This is an Ursa without life steal, mind you. It will cost uh, the team a little bit of extra HP. But they flare it for safety. Get the double line. This Ursa is an absolute monster. Like, he is gonna have Diffusal Blink Blink. You can't escape him. Uh, or Ember Spirit can escape him. No one else really can. You can purge off one... You could uh, press the attack, purge off one purge. Thanks, purge. But after that, like, this Ursa is going to be on your ass. And honestly, with this disable duration, I'm pretty sure you're just going to die before any of that really matters. See the SF? I'm for a... Uh, well, I, I could say unconventional, but we're seeing a lot more heroes pick up S and Y. This is a very situational item. When you're just prioritizing survivability, though, and that's all he really is, because he knows that flyby is the heavy, you don't really need to be going for any sort of, you know, purely aggro build as an SF. You can afford to... Slow your build down a little bit and mix in some survivability. And I like that quite a bit, actually. In this context, when you're with Ursa as Shadow Fiend, yeah, I think uh, going for some survivability is very smart. 
You can still go for like your Dragon Lance and four staff afterwards. Not like it's S and Y or bust. Hyper Strike? Not quite. Shadow got you baited. Ice Ice is here with the relocate, but the boat is coming in. The damage is very high. Shadow will get out of there. Still with the boat, though. That was a little bit awkward. And, uh, of course, guys, if you're ever playing Crystal Maiden and your uh, ultimate is no longer hitting anyone, you gotta full channel it regardless of what happens. Uh, are they gonna bring the Viper back? No, it's just the Io. He is very dead, but they do jump in and Goomba stomp the Kunkka. But here comes the Air Bear. Didn't have the Diffusal Blade just yet. He's gonna go towards Blink instead. Faith Fan purges himself. He's like, peace, yo. He's gonna give up a double kill to fly by. And with that... Oh, he actually does have the Diffusal Blade. Never mind. This is uh, Ursa who's running around without any answers. That's where Lion is supposed to come in. That's where Viper is supposed to come in. You just gotta kind of uh, chain down and forget about him. But uh, if the spells aren't landing, then he's going to claw you to shreds. TDEC are all over wings in the second game. This is game two with C-Deck up, mind you. Ham Midas already up on CM. He's gonna be rolling in the dough shortly. BKB up on flyby next. This is a very aggressive item from the Ursa. I mean, it's a good item to have regardless of the situation. Oh, Ice Ice. Not like this Io. Oh, God. It's just not fair when you see an Io being killed off by an Ursa. You feel like something's inherently wrong with that situation. You feel it in your gut. Like, oh, I should not be watching this. Gold for my chest. So, yeah, Ursa's level 13. Casually level 13. And, uh, yeah, he's got some serious targets. The quote-unquote tanky hero in the Viper. Well, he has, like, 200 more gold than the big crystal maiden. He's going for Hannah Midas. But, and I like to say this very rarely, the Viper will have his end of Midas after the enemy crystal maiden. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jun, coming in. Where are you going, Shadow? X marks this spot, and you are dead, sir. Crystal maiden... It is your destiny to outfarm the Viper in this game. Flyby is going ham because he has the Aegis. He literally does not care. Freezing Field off to the south. They'll hex it, cancel, and they'll kill off the Ursa once. But the cavalry is coming in hot. Cogs are available. They'll chain down the Ursa. That will do pretty much nothing. Ice Ice. Spotted by Sep. They will fire off a couple flares, some vision, or at least try to. And, oh, the Crystal Maiden has done it. For the first time ever, ladies and gentlemen, Crystal Maiden with more farm than the enemy mid lane Viper. Let's hear it. Crystal Maiden, round of applause. What? Oh, she has more than the Legion Commander also. The only person on the enemy team with more farm than the Crystal Maiden is the enemy safe laner. Literally the first time in the history of Dodor. Never before seen. And of course the Ursa and Shadow Fiend are, are farmed out of their minds as well. Like that, that's also happening. But uh, this is the important thing that's happening right here. My god, this is a one-sided game to say the least. The clockwork hasn't even like really joined the game. It's pretty much just everyone else. Mostly this Ursa. Uh, June's actually starting to pick up his combos really well now. But they hadn't really needed to get like hook shot initiations off. He used it once, I think. It hasn't really done much outside of that because they haven't needed the clockwork. He's gonna get his hand to Midas too. Is he gonna get it before the enemy Viper? No, not. But with Shadow Fiend on the team, they'll start demolishing structures. E tier 2, uh, they should stick around for this one. It's gonna get denied by Blink here. That's it's a little bit of an interesting play to back off with this many heroes when they could have just stuck around for legit two more seconds and gotten that tower destruction. Oh well. It's not like they need the gold. They're gonna go for a relocate kick up towards top. Cogs, not gonna come out just yet. They do land a finger and the Viper Strike, except is dead. Cogs go up, no one is able to capitalize on that. Really nice kill for wings. They break a dominating spree for Shadow, so he's gonna get a lot of cash off of that one. But, I mean, at this point, they just kinda need any kill they can get. Obviously, they would rather have an Ursa or a Shadow Fiend. But as these heroes bulk up, that's becoming less and less likely. Shadow Fiend heavily prioritizing his HP pool. 
already an ultimate orb. Sanj in his inventory. Wraith bands, two wraith bands, power threads, like whatever he's getting, it is gonna have some mix of stability in it. Because again, you don't really need him to do the damage. You need him to be around. Jade is pretty well equipped to do that right now. 16, 1800 HP. Almost at 1900. Level 15 already. Got the health talent. Guy's really, really tanky. And wings just don't have enough damage to kill off, like, either the Shadow Fiend or the Earth, so definitely not both. Uh oh. Run, Lion! Oh no, run! Oh, the bear's a fish! And Crystal Maiden with the kill! Bravo, demons! Bravo! Well, this is another tower down, another tier 2 probably on the way. Crystal Maiden has invasion, which isn't really going to be huge, I don't think, since you could probably kill her off through it. But uh, yeah, it's the soul curse that she's gunning for. Huge item uh, for the team, really. I don't think it's really defensive as much as it is going to be offensive. Just slap it on Flyby's target, and that target, or, or Shade's target, and they, they are going to die really quick. The uh, moment of silence, though, for the Crystal Maiden, who has fallen from the uh, position of farm from before. Now back where support should be. Oh, get X marked! No way! Kaboom! Yo, June is picking up his game. A couple of whiff turns in the early stages. No big deal when you can deliver like that. The only reason you go for that play as Ember Spirit is because you're like, oh, you know, I have a get out of jail free button. I can survive literally anything. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Whew. That was some X. Is this Oscotty done? Ugh, that's disgusting. That is actually disgusting. 21 minutes, Scotty. Yo, in your pub, if you have a 20 minute Scotty and your Shadow Fiend, you're like, okay, whatever, that's fine. But no, Shade has I of Scotty plus an S and Y. <laughs> the clockwork is going to say, screw Armlet. Uh, screw Mice, I'm going for Armlet. <laughs> whatever, man. Like, you do you. Honestly, C Deck have complete control of the map. They can get literally whatever item they want on anybody. BKB is still on 10 seconds on Ursa. Uh, I would want to... Okay, there we go. BKB on the Shadow Fiend is next. Probably should have that level 20 damage talent by the time this uh, BKB rolls around. And for wings, what do they have? They have the... Duel. Can the duel win? Oh, Shade is actually kicking Fitzpan's ass and he's actually going to get a kill beforehand. That was not planned. Well, they kill off... Oh, X marked the land? No, it didn't. They kill off the Shadow Fiend, but the Ursa is still in the Roche Pit, claiming a double life. That's what I was going to say. Like, Wings do have the uh, kind of map mobility luxury. They have the Relocate. They have the Ember Spirit. They can split push. They can look for these pickoffs. Should see it get separated. Well, they separated the Shadow Fiend to bottom. Honestly, kind of asking for trouble there. You can only keep the enemies split up, though, for so long before it just stops working. And they decide to just YOLO down the mid lane. Not quite gonna happen yet, at least for another 20 seconds yet. Again, they would like to have a, uh, a Shadow Fiend with the BKB up. Again, it's still not up. Level 20 as well. Or do you get lifesteal here? I don't think I've ever seen a Shadow Fiend get the lifesteal. But honestly, in this game, it's not that bad. Again, his priority is survival. Maybe you just get the damage because it's so ridiculous, but... Uh, I think if there is a game where you're going to get the life steal, it might be this one. Look at this. Flyby and demons are like, yo, we'll just camp out right here. Any one poor sucker who comes into mid lane, screwed. Legion's like, yo, I kind of want to farm this. Kind of want to, but I know that I'll probably die... Luckily for her, there is an eye in the area, but oh no, Faith Bien tries to farm it and is gonna die. <laughs> patience, patience, man. It's a virtue. It gets you kills. Just chill forever. Sooner or later, someone is gonna decide to farm, and that's when you pounce. Shot in, and the bear's in as well. Poor lion. He's gonna get pushed back in dead cogs. 
Shadow's gonna shrine up. I don't think they care about that. Here comes the boat. Rum on everyone. Viper's down. Io's gonna peace out of there. Into the fountain where he's... Uh, yeah, gonna heal up. Come back in with 1100 HP. Probably to not much of a base. Yeah, at this stage you get the damage so you can kill buildings off faster, right? There's no Viper, there's no Legion for another two seconds. Flyby is just chilling. Okay, now he's attacking. But Rax is down in 24. And the team, as a whole, will probably make a clean retreat. They'll root down the Ursa, but he has a double life, so that's fine. He will lose it. But if Wings decide to fight this, they will just be going to their deaths. They'll spike up the Ursa, try to be cute. But uh, you don't you don't do that here. Actually, he missed most of his attacks there, it seems. So yeah, Lion is somehow gonna survive. They take down the Aegis, I guess. That's kind of nice. But the Earth still has BKB at 10 seconds. Still have access to shrines. They still have the racks in advantage. And wings are struggling to get kind of cheesy pickoffs. Blink does have a Lincoln Spear. So that X Mark shenanigans. Probably not gonna see it again on this uh, on this Ember Spirit. But you know what? I don't really think they have to rely on that. They could just straight push whatever lane the Ember is pushing. They could even sacrifice tier twos. I'll see that can even sacrifice Raxes to gain Raxes, because there's no way that Wings can outrace them. That is something that they can do. That's not something they're going to do. But they are just that disgustingly far ahead. Shrine party, Crystal Man not invited. Time to smoke up. This is their game-winning attempt at a, at a play. By the way, the damage Crystal Maiden, legit. And they found target. Target is very close to the IO. Ice Ice prime up, hookshot gonna miss. Shadow still goes down though. And Ice Ice does not leave. That means he's gonna leave in a body bag. They also found Y. X marked, where you going, Lion? Spike, got two, not bad. But I'm not liking his chances here. Purge, and he's dead. Double kill for flyby. It's an absolute feeding frenzy, and that's GG. This was one of the most disgusting side thoughts. We saw three side stuff. The guys. And uh, we'll see that put the screws to wings. Now I really like the Viper Io up against the Shadow Fiend. I think that has some uh, that has some potential. I think the Ember Spirit safe lane is 